Welcome back, friends of the program. It's I, Professor Pandemic, here with another math lesson. Today, we're subtracting mixed numbers with regrouping. Another word for regrouping is when you have to borrow with a mixed number. This is a very challenging skill because it tests our knowledge of place value a little bit and our understanding of different systems because now we just don't have a base 10 system. We might have a base 5 system or a base 6 system when we're regrouping. And that's really the biggest grip that kids have when solving this. But we'll talk about that in this example. So right here we had 4 and 1 third minus 2 and 5 6. Just like adding and subtracting, you always start with making equivalent fractions. So hopefully by now you're seeing 3 and 6 both have 6 in common which is why I multiplied three by two in the numerator and denominator. That gets me four and two six minus two and five six. Now, if you notice here, you subtract with the fractions first. You can't subtract two minus five. A lot of kids will just do two minus five and come up with three. That's not three, that's negative three. Now, if you're in sixth or seventh grade and are doing negative numbers, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're in fourth or fifth grade, you don't want negative numbers right now. So you have to borrow. How you borrow is just like you start with. You take one away from the four and you make it a three. However, your fraction is out of six. So this doesn't become a 12. It becomes an eight because you're adding another six to it. Remember, you're adding one, and one in this problem is six over six. Now, an easy way to remember this is when you're borrowing, you take your denominator and add it to the numerator. Six plus two is eight, and that will get you your new numerator. Denominator stays the same. So that's the easiest way for me to explain it shorthand how to do it. Take your six, add two. Not every problem is going to have a 6 there. If you have an 8 there, it would have been 8 plus 2. So whatever your denominator is there when you're borrowing, you take that, add it to your numerator, and that becomes your new top number. That's the biggest spot where students make mistakes with subtracting and borrowing. Because everything else now is the same. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 and 3 is 6. You're not going to have a whole lot of improper fractions with subtracting, but you'll have more Simplifying, 3 is half of 6, so I can divide by 3, and that gets me 1 and 1 half. So like I said, everything with adding is basically the same with subtracting. Obviously, you're subtracting, and this is the big spot here, making sure you borrow correctly. So when you're doing problems at home or in class, make sure you're really focused on this step. That's where I'm going to focus a lot of my instruction in this video today. So take a minute. Rewatch the video if you need to, or if not, let's start some problems. All right, friends, here we are. Four and one ninth minus one and two third. Let's see if you can subtract this mixed number and come up with the correct answer. All right, everyone, hopefully you came up with two and four ninths for your answer. If not, hopefully when we go over this, you'll see where your mistake is. Let's take a look. So again, three when we skip count to find equivalent fractions, three, six, nine, nine fifths. So I can just bring my four and one nines down, multiply my numerator and denominator here by three. I have four and one ninth minus one and six ninths. I can't subtract one minus six. One is smaller than six, so I have to borrow. I take my four, make it a three. Now I have to change my numerator. See, now we're in a base nine system which means when we borrow, we're actually adding nine over nine. Nine plus one is 10, which is why I have 10 here. Again, simpler way to think about it, take your nine in your denominator, add one, you get your new numerator of 10 and 10 ninths. So you can think of it this way, which is literally how it's going, or take the shorthand way and add nine plus one to get 10, the goal, obviously, is to get the answer, but you still hopefully want to understand why it's 10. This 9 over 9 is really like adding 1, but 1 and 1 ninth isn't going to help us when we have a 4 there, So, which is why we have to do this work to get that borrowing there. 3 and 9 tenths, another way to see it, by the way, 
3 and 10 over 9, if we change this back into a mixed number, we would have 1 and 1 ninth, and we add 3, that gets us the 4 and 1 ninth that we originally had. So again, just like regular borrowing, we're changing what we have, but still keeping the same amount so we can do the math and solve it correctly without having a lot of confusion. So, hopefully that helps clear this up a little bit. Again, watch this and the previous question if you're unsure of what I'm talking about. We're going to go a little faster in the next couple problems. So hopefully this helps and let's try another question. Alright friends, for this problem we have 6 and 3 twelfths minus 2 and 5 6. Let's see how we do and hope to get a correct answer. Hopefully your answer came out to be 3 and 5 over 12. Again, only had to change one fraction because 6, once we skip count, 6, 12. 12 is obviously what we want both of our denominators to be, so we multiply 6 by 2. We end up with 6 and 3 twelfths minus 2 and 10 twelfths. We have to borrow 1 from the 6 to make it a 5. Again, we have a 12 here, so 12 is our system here. 12 plus 3 is 15. So we have 5 and 15 over 12 minus 2 and 10 over 12. 15 minus 10 is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. No simplifying required. We have 3 and 5 over 12. So hopefully we're feeling a little bit better about this now. Let's get to our last two problems of this video. All right, mathematicians. Our last two problems of the video, we have 7 and 1 7 minus 2 and 1 half and 5 and 3 eighths minus 2 and 3 fourths. Do your best, pause the video so that way you have a couple minutes to solve these on your own, and we'll check your answers once you're finished. All right, friends, how'd we do? Hopefully we ended up with four and nine over 14 and two and five eighths. Let's take a look. So when, after we made equivalent fractions here, we should have ended up with seven and two fourteenths minus two and seven fourteenths had to borrow, so that means we should have gotten 6 and 16 over 14 minus 2 and 7 fourteenths. Gets us 4 and 9 over 14. No simplifying needed. Next problem, we only had to make one equivalent fraction, so we ended up with 5 and 3 eighths minus 2 and 6 eighths. We borrow. 8 plus 3 is 11. That's how we ended up with 4 and 11 over 8 minus 2 and 6 eighths. Again, once we subtract 2 and 5 eighths, no simplifying needed. And that, hopefully, got you a little pat in the back from whoever's watching if you got both of them correct. And that concludes our lesson on subtracting mixed numbers with regrouping, aka borrowing. I am Professor Pandemic. I wish everyone a great day and we'll see you at the next video. And remember, the more you learn, the more you know.